is reviewing all of the proposals, and then we will, uh, you know, um, send Moses out to our evaluation team for them to be evaluated, and that will be next week. And I'm just trying to work down on that that says if, if, if we had to close and there's any ramp of time bringing the people on, any of that type of stuff, it sounds like we're down to maybe a little bit of holidays, 45 days before February to actually do this
money or is increasing as the numbers are increasing. So again, as long as we can keep our our contractors, our contractors fully engaged and meet those metrics, I'm confident that we can meet that goal for for February 24. The plan is to continue to stay current and and meet other metrics will depend on what happens with this outside contract that came in yesterday. And what, depending on the outcome of that, will determine the structure that we have to do within our department um, to get staffing and to, to keep the real staff from and to keep us current. So that is the key right there. So I'm just trying to make sure that I understand. Um, so, because when, when I hear about the delinquent, so I'm trying to think of a mortgage, right? The actual today is the first. You don't pay on 18 to the 16. And so some people say, oh, I'm never late. I always pay on the 13th. And so are, is that what we're shooting for? Or are we trying to get to the point where we're actually paying on the first? So no, I understand yeah. the delinquency is it, something that's 14 months. Is it, or that's what we call it, delinquent? Not that it should have been done before. Well, it's like, what time did that score, right? Right on the threshold. What's my safe app score? Okay. It's the safe app score. For the, those that are over 14. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, like, here's what I heard. Yeah. Right. Is, is right now, the house is on fire. Right. We gotta, like, put it out. Okay. Right. So, so, we're trying to get the number under 14 yes. down. And that, we think we're trying to strive for to February. Right. However, that doesn't get us current. That just means we're less delinquent. But we've got optionality here that we're evaluating about, okay, once we get under 14, how we are get ourselves from 14 to current, and how do we maintain current, current C, current, I don't know, you know what I'm saying, I don't remain current, I'm going. That sounds like a topic for a discussion in January, maybe? Because I don't want to be decided in February when the contract is expiring, so tell me there's not. No, I, I agree. I just, what, what I was worried was that we calling current less than 13 months, right? Exactly. And so, and so, and so, and so, and so that making sure that I'm understanding the terminology, to say, to say, okay, it, are there any impacts? And I would imagine there are to someone being 13 months uh, late on their, their certification to their lives, to our business, even though HUD doesn't make it. Or is it that it doesn't matter if it's 13 months uh, late on the recertification? I thought they had a little bit for the next one. It absolutely matters. Right. Um, while, while we want to be cognizant of the threshold that HUD has in place, because we want to make sure that we are not getting into trouble with HUD. Right. So that's the number. But internally, no, it, it, it's not okay for us to be 12 months delinquent just because it's under that threshold. Right. We want to get back to the, the standard of performance that would bring us back to where we were when we were high performance. Right. From 16 to 19, we were above average and high performance. Right. And that a huge part of that was making sure that our delinquent activity was at 5% or less. That is our goal. Our goal is not just to, you know, get us to the sweet spot of not being in trouble and now we're okay to post. No, we want to get back to performing as optimally as we can and providing the best service that we can. And so our goal is to not have delinquents, um, again, 3%, 5 to 3% or less is, is what our game is, what we're aiming for. No, we don't, we don't want to be 12 months, we don't want to be 11 months, no. Because it's a knockout effect. It's not only just like the numbers in our state match court service, it's a knockout effect. So I think it's very difficult to tell landlords or to have resident expectations. Like, we want you to work with us, we want you to do your job, we're not doing ours, right? And like, that, that is, like, just because we stay out of trouble, it right. limits our ability to be affected. Right? Well, that, that, that was my expectation. I just wanted to make sure we weren't using terminology that's called current, being only 13 months late. Yeah, I think I'm like, I want to, like, I want you to hear this out of here, like, I feel like I'm getting into this, I'm not, I am you know, just sad about this, but I'm glad that we are all working together, I think, alignment to get this done. Um, I, I know that this is, I think I said to you before, like, this is my first job out of college, was like, I'm just, it's like, I really understand how hard this work is to do, but, um, it is just, like, A, it's our bread and butter, and B, like, we just have to, we have to get our head above water, and I don't want... I'm not saying you personally, I don't want to try to slip in here, right? To say, like, we're going to do this ourselves, right? Like, this problem has gotten bigger. Obviously, it's gotten bigger. That's why we're doing our fees. That's why we've got contractors, et cetera. So, I don't want you to be afraid to ask for extraordinary help if we're not getting there. Like, we just now can't get there. I, I, I absolutely agree. And um, I know this is the first time, guys, I'm probably saying me in person, but no, I am very vocal about what we need for our department. Um, and the number one thing we need is staff. We have to have staff to be able to continue to meet the metrics that we need to meet. And, and that is, that's a 
of some exploration. They have staff, or at least they contract with the staff. They pay them pretty well. And like, they should have the greatest capacity. They ain't. Let's just tell me otherwise. So I do have an anecdote. I was on, uh, what the city of Detroit is doing, uh, working around homeless population, one of those solutions. So they ended up having two hour meetings with service providers, housing providers, um, people who have lived experience talking about it. And so I was on one last week and I heard a woman describing her um, experience with um, getting our adoption. When she applied, how long it took to hear her, her kids were toddlers, when she finally heard that her toddler was 14, and she went through this whole thing. And the whole time, because we're online, I'm going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Um, and then she sort of talked about the problems she was having. And then she said she announced who her vulture was through and was with, administered by, and it wasn't us. So first of all, I gave thanks for that, but it, it confirmed for me that that this is a difficult program to run, and the things that she was announcing were the same things that we were going through that this other organization is now going through, and I was going, okay, but... Uh, so there's some comfort in that, but not real. You know what I mean? It's like we're sort of in this together and we've got to figure out our solutions. And so we have plans A, B, and C to do that. Thank <laughs> you. 